Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you on this last day of May in Alaska, at least for 2018. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information, and you can do that anytime by calling the Alaska Weather Information Line 1-800-472-0391. Find us online at weather.gov slash Alaska, and if you can't find what you're looking for, Always email me anytime, david.snyder at noaa.gov. From our website, you can always find links to the Alaska Pacific River Forecast Center and the latest on the snow water equivalent that still remains in the mountains. And of course, how much of that water is coming down into your local rivers and streams. A lot of gauges across Alaska, and you can check nearly every one of them. And you can also still check on the breakup map for the North Slope. We are still watching the Colville, the Sag, and the Kuparik, of course, with a flood advisory ongoing on the Colville River right now. And that is one of the reasons that you see the yellow shaded area across the central Beaufort Seacoast this evening. Uh, that will probably continue as we head into Saturday, but the other reason is we are still dealing with winter weather advisories across the North Slope. That will continue until tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock for the threat of freezing rain. And while that's not unusual, it's, uh, it's always kind of a, an interesting side note that we're about to turn the calendar page over to June and we're still talking about winter uh, in, uh, in Alaska, so uh, here we are. Uh, that will continue for the eastern Beaufort Sea Coast as well until about 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. So uh, flooding, some breakup flooding, still a possibility there. There is uh, some uh, water coming up onto the road around the Colville area uh, and uh, around the dump road as far as we know. And uh, that looks like that will probably continue at least for the next couple of days. So uh, keep that in mind there if you're in and around the Colville area. And hello to everybody in Colville. Uh, we know who you are. <laughs> so sit in a river. Flood advisories there as well. Uh, still a little bit of uh, extra water coming down out of the mountains. And a note to everyone else uh, going out into uh, well, the, the back country or just along your favorite stream, no matter if that's uh, along a road or not, in South Central and probably into the interior as we go into the weekend, we're going to get some much warmer weather in here. And as a result of that, all the snow that's all the way up in here and all the way up in here is probably going to melt a little bit faster than it has been. And that means your favorite rivers and streams are going to come up. And some of that could happen fairly quickly, especially in the heat of the day. So make sure you know where you're camping. And if you're in a safe place, uh, and if there's thunderstorms added to that mix, uh, we could have some uh, pretty quick river surges there, or stream surges, especially in the smaller watersheds. Just make sure you know where you're camping and that it's not a flood-prone area uh, and uh, that you've got an escape route if the water does come up pretty quickly. It's always a good idea to know where you are uh, so you have a, a good way to get out in case trouble happens. So flood advisories in the Susitna Valley and also across the North Slope and an added bonus, winter weather advisories through early tomorrow morning. Here's a look at the breakup map. We were talking about the Colville River. Uh, areas just north of the Colville region, as far as we know, we're still looking at some ice there, and there's still some ice across some of the very northernmost parts of the coast on top of sea ice there. That's limiting how much of that water can escape the rivers quickly. So we're still watching breakup up north. I still like to check this out anytime. Weather.gov slash APRFC is the place to check it out. And of course, everything south of the Brooks Range at this point is open. Fire danger, a little bit less than what we were talking about yesterday. The region up here across the Yukon Flats is uh, minimized just a little bit more across the area. You'll also notice uh, the Copper River Basin, the valley I should say, uh, is still uh, holding on to its, its drier weather, but all the numbers compared to what we saw yesterday have improved. And that'll continue as long as we're getting some daily showers and thunderstorms across the region, and as long as one of those lightning strikes doesn't make things worse. Here's a look at the visible satellite picture and see if you can find what I'm talking about here. This area of low pressure right here, you see that nice little spin that's moving from uh, the east to the west? This is helping to add lift and instability to the atmosphere. That combined with the heat of the day, uh, really giving kind of a, a nice starter for some spring and uh, early summer season shower and thunderstorm activity across the interior. So if you're in the middle Tanana Valley, the upper Yukon Flats, the upper Tanana Valley, you're going to have the rumbles of thunder and uh, some lightning strokes out there uh, through the rest of the afternoon and evening, I think. It'll be fairly widespread. Keep your eye on that and make sure you're getting out of the way. If that means you got to put soccer practice away for a few minutes and get inside or go sit in mom and dad's car. If you're in the Fairbanks area or North Pole, make sure you do that. Make sure you have a safe place to go. Make sure your kids know what to do if they're out there. And, uh, you know, if they're just taking a walk and going up the ridge line or something, it's a good time to get off the hill, of course, and wait 30 minutes until the last uh, sound of thunder or sighting of lightning 
has gone away. Give it time, and it will go away. It's an it's a Alaska thunderstorm. They, they vanish fairly quickly. Out across the west, we have a ridge of high pressure here, and you can see that on the visible satellite picture, kind of that uh, southerly motion and then more of a uh, uh, northerly flow on the west side and southerly flow on the east side, and, and then a weak area of low pressure here, very close to St. Paul. And out west, a uh, strengthening area of low pressure. Now, that'll be the thing to watch over the next couple days, especially if you're in the Aleutians. This looks like it's going to drop to about 970 millibars, and there's really not much to look at here on the western side of the image just yet. But you'll see in the charts that it has some potential of cranking up at least strong gales and quite possibly some storm force winds. And if you're going, it's May, right? It's almost June. Yeah, it's a little bit on the unusually strong side of weather for western Alaska in the chain. So. Uh, we'll see what happens with that as we go ahead in the next couple days. The other part is, uh, area of low pressure here across the central and e eastern Gulf is moving northward. We've got a weaker zone here, but another little surge is kind of catching the southern end of that, just south and west of Haida Gwaii. And the models aren't doing such a great job at looking at this just yet, but the forecasters in Juneau are, and they say we need to keep our eye on this area of low pressure that's moving north because it has the potential to strengthen more than what the forecast models are showing. So if you're just looking at, uh, say, your favorite wind plot with the moving particles all around that shows all the lines all over the place, you know what I'm talking about. Well that may not be capturing the winds effectively. And so if you're using that to make a forecast, be extra careful and make sure you check in the weather forecast office in Juneau to see how they're handling the path of the storm over the next couple days. Because if it strengthens, the winds that you're seeing here across southern parts of southeast and the Dixon entrance could be a lot stronger. So keep watch on that. Those are uh, my, my only few hints or uh, little nuggets of wisdom there in the, in the weather world there that'll take you through the weekend. Let's look out west. Here's a developing wave. Here's warm air coming into the western parts of the Bering Sea. We've got a weak area of low pressure here. High pressure sitting across western Alaska, trying to keep clouds in a minimum, not doing a great job, and widely scattered showers and thunderstorms across the central and eastern interior. Periods of freezing rain up north and some probably just dense fog. Uh, looks like areas around Wainwright were showing snow. Sometimes when there's dense fog, that's what happens. And then we have some rain showers across the central gulf. And here's our other area of low pressure that's not terribly strong or interesting just yet. As we go into tonight, we're still not showing a very powerful area of low pressure here. So you're saying, what are you talking about? There's no winds. Uh, the idea is that some of this could strengthen again beyond what we're showing. So keep watch on that part. Showers across the interior all the way into the southwest in Bristol Bay. Areas of light freezing rain still possible across places like Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse out toward Kaktovik through tonight and early tomorrow morning. The next wave of weather working across the Gulf of Anadir and the Western Bering, still not horribly exciting, but then there's one more just barely making its way into uh, the Western chain at 979 millibars. Showers and thunderstorms should ease up a little bit this evening. They'll be back again tomorrow for the interior and into southwest. And a little bit closer to the Anchorage region, the Matsu Valleys could see and hear some thunder and lightning and uh, maybe get fairly close to the Anchorage region as well. Not yet for the Kenai, though. It uh, looks like that could be coming, but not quite yet for Friday. Uh, watch for some light freezing rain up north, and then as we get into Saturday, that finally moves away as some of that colder air is pushed into Canada. We start to get into some drier weather for the North Slope, but we're also getting into warmer weather, so there's a possibility that some of that change could bring a shower or thunderstorm in the region just along the Brooks Range Summit southward, all the way along the Alaska Range, uh, the Talkeetnas into Anchorage region, and maybe even over the Kenai Peninsula. So this is Saturday. It's going to be a warm weekend. You and I both know that there's going to be a lot of people out there across the peninsula. Just be careful and have a plan again to seek shelter from lightning should that develop. Out across southeast, you're back in the rain again, and here's our area of low pressure. Again, not very impressive, especially for winds. But once again, this could strengthen beyond what we're showing here, so make sure you're keeping watch on that. And then speaking of strengthening, we have a 967 millibar low and the heart of the bearing with a decent front moving across the chain. Storm force winds are probably the higher end of possibilities. Gales are pretty likely at this point. So keep watch on that as we get winds pumping into the Aleutians on an unusually strong system for what this would be, what, the 2nd of June now? So also the time of the year, kind of, kind of strange stuff. But many in South Central and Southwest uh, and the interior will be warming up. Let's take a look at those temperatures. As we get into Friday morning, 30s and 40s, in fact, nearly 50 degrees around Fort Yukon tomorrow morning, a low to mid 40s for many in South Central. Southeast, uh, mid 40s should do the trick from Ketchikan all the way up toward uh, Skagway and Haines and Juneau. 
St. Paul about 38 degrees, only a little bit warmer than that for Unalaska Dutch Harbor out towards Sand Point, Adak and Atka also looking at temps in the 40s, 38 in Nome, 33 in Shishmaref, about 37 in Kivalina. Uh, Barrow and Ukiabic, uh, Wainwright and Kaktovic all looking at temps in the upper 20s, Ambler and Bettles in the low 40s. High temps for Friday, look at that, nearly 70 degrees around Fort Yukon, uh, the middle Tanana Valley not too far behind in the mid 60s. Upper 60s around Talkeetna, lower 60s as you get into the uh, Matsu Valleys and Anchorage Bowl, 59 around uh, Kenai, 57 around Homer. Uh, mid to upper 50s around Seward, nearly 60 in parts of Prince William Sound, upper 50s and low 60s for southeast, Kodiak 53, upper 40s to low 50s for the Alaska Peninsula and the chain, Nunavak Island 47, Bethel close to 60 and 43 in Nome. Overnight lows Saturday morning back in the 40s again for most of the interior in the lowlands, the YK Delta 44 in Kodiak, uh, temperatures in the low to mid 40s for South Central. The Copper River Basin, Gulf Canada, you're looking at about 42. Eagle and Northway, closer to 40 degrees. The North Slope, back in the 20s, but just barely, you know, almost in the 30s there. It looks like uh, Point Hope, Point Lay, Wainwright, all the way down towards Shishmaref and Kivalina, still in the 20s and 30s there. And as we get into Saturday afternoon, that heat really pushes further west. Galena, 66. Uh, Bethel, you're looking at 64. King Salmon and Dillingham, mid 60s there. Uh, much warmer for Kodiak, 57, upper 50s for southeast, nearly 70 in uh, the Parks Highway road system there around Talkeetna, and 33 in Barrow. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to aviation now, IFR conditions are focused on the uh, north slope there, and again, fog and flurries possible there. In fact, uh, winter weather advisories have been posted today across this region as this low pressure system is moving east. We still have a lot of dense clouds and stratus across the bearing. That's probably not going to change in any big way. As we get into the afternoon, you'll notice a lot of that's still pushing its way eastward into more of Norton Sound, Nunavak Island, down into the eastern Bering Sea and almost into Bristol Bay. Uh, and then still hovering around the north slope. Uh, slope conditions itself probably more likely to be MVFR as you get away from the coast. Same goes for Kotzebue Sound and interior parts of Norton Sound. Don't forget about increasing areas of convection as we get through Friday afternoon. And MVFR may find its way into the Copper River Valley and also into the extreme southern parts of the Clarence Strait and the Dixon Entrance region across uh, central and eastern parts of the Gulf. And conditions are improving here, but they're also moving toward central and southern parts of southeast. You'll notice by Saturday morning we have IFR up over the Misty Fjords and working their way up towards Stevens Passage. IFR is still fairly thick across the North Slope all the way through the Bering Strait and still creeping its way into Bristol Bay here, covering up St. Paul and St. George and also across the central chain there. St. Lawrence Island also looking at IFR to start your Saturday morning. Don't be surprised again for fog, flurries, maybe even some snow across the north slope for Saturday morning. That should improve by the afternoon. And once again, widely scattered convection spreading out across the central and eastern interior all the way down to the Alaska Range now and also the Kenai Peninsula. So plan on some increased areas of coverage for showers and maybe thunderstorms as well as we get through your Saturday afternoon. St. Paul and St. George back in the IFR as we get into Saturday and south of Unalaska and Dutch Harbor all the way out to just about Sand Point. IFR conditions expected there as a front is moving in from west to east towards southwestern Alaska. MVFR spreading northward now back into Juneau, the capital city, and uh, Skagway and Haines all the way up toward, oh, uh, looks like Gustavus and Sitka. So uh, your, your sunny days are slowly coming to an end. Here's a look at past conditions now as we get into your Friday flying. Anaktuvik expected to start at MVFR, at least on the north side. Some improvements will be noted as the day goes through, but expect more issues the further north you go. Uh, obviously, with a widespread IFR in the morning along the coast, uh, some of that's going to be poking its way into the Brooks Range. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, we're looking at MVFR to start your Friday. Improvements had all day long. Looks like an MVFR kind of day in Rainy Pass. Showers and thunderstorms developing in the afternoon and again on Saturday, so plan your weekend accordingly there. Windy Pass, marginal conditions through most of the day. We expect improvements to be had, but uh, it may take a little longer there. MVFR most of the day for Isabel Pass, in fact. Uh, widely scattered showers and storms in the region. Mentasta Pass also to the north, especially widely scattered convection is possible. Mentasta Pass, marginal conditions there. Tanita Pass, at least starting there. Some improvements may be seen through the day. We'll watch for showers and storms developing in the region. Uh, Friday looks like VFR and Portage, so now's the time. Small seas, in fact, as we get out toward uh, the region in the next couple days for most of Prince William Sound before we get into any big weather changes. So maybe a good time to fly that way. And for Chilkoot and White Pass, 
for Friday VFR. Saturday and VFR looks like it's going to roll back in there as the weather starts to change. Freezing levels indicate the coldest air is still up to the north and west, and you can see a surge of warm weather moving into the bearing. Levels there over eight to 10,000 feet for the central chain. Uh, freezing levels across the Gulf still hovering around 4,000 feet and even lower in some cases in the central Gulf, about four to 6,000 feet south of Haida Gwaii. Very close to 4,000 feet for most of the panhandle. The interior sees levels for anywhere from 4,000 feet on the west coast to about 6,000 feet in the middle. Tanana Valley, maybe even a little bit higher up around Eagle for your daytime tomorrow. Icing potential is up there above 6,000 feet for a large part of the eastern gulf. So uh, isolated moderate still pretty high up there. You can sneak away underneath that pretty easily. Widely scattered showers and storms again imply severe icing on a very isolated basis, but keep your eye on that. That's always a threat for aviators this time of the year. And above 5,000 feet across the eastern sections of Russia and Asia into the western chain. So uh, limited potential for most of our aviation community. Here's the jet stream. Fast moving river of air is out here across the southern gulf. Our ridge is building. Great news for heat in south central this weekend and the interior. Watch for changes there, but we still have a big connection to tropical moisture out in the west. We'll keep an eye on that. Strong southerly winds developing across the central and western chain and the Bering Sea. Offshore flow for most of southeast, south central. Light winds in the interior. For Friday, you can see those light winds here at 3,000 feet as well, but look at the winds growing across the chain, uh, pushing 80 to 90 knots with that strong southerly flow. So where's our turbulence going to be? Oh, at least out here in the central and western chain below 4,000 feet and a little bit of chop developing in southern parts of southeast. Retrograde. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. In a little less than a month, one of our favorite planets will do a cosmic backpedal that had astronomers scratching their heads for centuries. That's right, James. Near the end of June, the planet Mars will begin moving backwards against the background stars. We call it retrograde motion. And it's a heavenly sign that great things are about to happen. What are we talking about? Let's show you. Throughout human history, people have studied the motion of the planets. They call them wandering stars because they appear to move against the background of fixed stars. Furthermore, they would occasionally change their direction, speed, brightness, and even their color. Ancient Greek astronomers referred to these wandering stars as Asteris Planetes, which we have shortened today to planet. The individual names we use for the planets today are derived from characters in Roman mythology. For example, Mercury is named after the messenger of the Roman gods. He was known for his speed, and this planet lives up to its namesake. Mercury is traveling at over 100,000 miles per hour around the sun and can complete one orbit of the sun in about 88 days. Mars, the red planet, is special because of its dramatic change in brightness and color. The reddish color of the surface of Mars prompted many cultures to associate this planet with their gods of blood and violence. Before the true nature of planetary motion was understood, it was believed that whenever Mars began moving backwards in the sky, war, pestilence, and death were not far behind. Furthermore, since Mercury was the messenger of the gods, it was often thought to be a bad idea to do anything involving communications whenever Mercury was in retrograde. Followers of the geocentric model of the solar system devised a complicated series of overlapping circles to explain planetary motion. Each planet was assumed to move on a small circle called an epicycle, which in turn moved on a larger circle called a deferent, which was centered on a point in space called an eccentric. After about 10 minutes of looking at this celestial whirly gig, it makes my head hurt. So fortunately, through the efforts of Copernicus, Kepler, and Newton, we now understand how, why, and when the planets will move as they do. The cause of retrograde is quite simple, and it's something you've all experienced. Imagine you're on a three-lane highway. Mercury is in the fast lane on the left. Mars is in the slow lane on the right, and you're in the middle lane. If you're traveling faster than the car next to you, that car will appear to be moving backwards with respect to the background. This is what's happening between Earth and Mars. 
So, every 26 months, as we get close to Mars in our orbit, we pass it, and it appears to move backwards, and it gets brighter as we get closer. An observer on Mercury looking at Earth would see the same effect every four months. From our perspective, since Mercury is always near the Sun, Mercury will appear to be moving from east to west as it passes between us and the Sun. Speaking of which, let's see what the planets will be doing next week. Okay, we have our sky set for just before sunrise any morning next week, facing west. Calus Borealis marks the top of the lid of the teapot of Sagittarius, and you'll see the ringed planet Saturn very close to it. Mars is also nearby and will be very easy to find as it's the only bright thing in the constellation of Capricornus the sea goat. And if you need a little lunar help to find planets, well, you can watch the moon every morning this week. On the morning of Thursday, May 31st, the waning gibbous moon will be approaching and then passing Saturn. Here's where the moon will be on June 1st, June 2nd, and June 3rd. Oh yeah, a conjunction. Cue the music. Yep, Mars and the moon will be in close conjunction on the morning of Sunday, June 3rd. Oh yeah, and so head outside and check out Mars as it begins to go retrograde next month. It's easy to do if you remember to keep, keep looking up. up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Time for a quick check of your sea ice edge. And one of the things that will make some north slope flooding just a little bit worse is the inability of some of that north slope ice to get off the coastline. And for right now, there's still high concentrations of sea ice along the central and eastern Beaufort Sea coast. You can see some changes here. The marginal ice just north and east of Kaktovik and significant areas of open water along the Chukchi coast. Uh, probably the most mobile part of all of the ice right now, as explained to us by the Alaska Sea Ice Program, will be this finger of ice that's moving out and kind of closer to the Kotzebue Sound region. This will probably move uh, to the north and to the west. So watch for some changes there. Uh, probably not a good place to park and uh, do any activities right now. So for the very latest sea ice conditions where you are with a zoomable map and a lot more detail than I can provide with you on this show, Check out weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice for the forecast and the seasonal outlook to take you through the rest of summer. Let's take a look at the forecast in southeast. Remember, we're going to keep watch on the area here across the Dixon entrance and the southern outer coast uh, with respect to that area of low pressure we were talking about a little while ago. Southerlies in the Lynn Canal, easterly offshore winds from Port Alexander all the way down toward Craig, Cloac, 8 to 10 foot seas there with a 25 knot wind coming in off the east. And then the winds start to pick up as low pressure gets closer here. Remember, this could be stronger over the next couple days, so keep close watch on the outer coast winds and the southern Dixon entrance. Right now, inside passage waters, only looking at about 10 to 15 knot winds from the south and seas holding around two to three feet, seven to uh, five foot seas as you get up further north across the outer coast. So right now things don't look too bad, but they could worsen here if that low strengthens. So once again, keep an eye on that. Across South Central, wow. Going into the weekend, it's going to be warm. There's a chance for some showers and maybe a few thunderstorms, mainly over land, of course, but small seas and uh, light winds. Things look pretty good on Friday. 10 knots and two to four foot seas in most areas, including Prince William Sound and Cook Inlet for Friday. Very little change on Saturday with the exception of a southwesterly flow developing across the outer coast up to 15 knots, three foot seas outside of Resurrection Bay around the Barrens, inside Prince William Sound, southwesterlies, two foot seas there. Oh, it's gonna look like a parking lot with everybody out and enjoying that water there. So be careful, of course, but enjoy the nice forecast in South Central. For Friday, light winds inside of uh, Bristol Bay, 15 knots, three foot seas, probably parking lot weather around here as well. Uh, 10 to 15 knot winds across the outer coast around Kodiak Island and down toward the Pacific coast. Uh, five to six foot seas expected on Friday. For Saturday, though, changes are afoot. Southerlies coming into Bristol Bay, still light inside the bay. Just to the west, though, south and southeasterlies coming up to 30 knots with seven to eight foot seas around Kodiak Island. Uh, small seas still three to four feet and 10 to 15 knot winds from the south and southwest. 
Keep your eye on what's coming for Saturday night and into Sunday, though, as the winds begin to come up. And here's a taste of that. Southerly's on Friday for the central and eastern chain. 15 to 30 knot winds, 7 to 8 foot seas. Storm force winds, though, developing around Kiska to Adak and out towards Shemya. 40 to 45 to 50 knot winds with 18 foot seas on Friday. Where does that go? On Saturday, that blows in a little bit more to the east. Uh, we're looking at gales at least for most areas. 35 to 40 knot winds, seas up to 27 feet from Adak to Kiska, 16 to 23 feet across the central chain, and again, 35 to 45 knot winds in all areas. Could be stronger though, so keep your eye on that. This is an unusually strong storm moving into the bearing. And initially on Friday along the west coast, you'll see winds from 15 to 20 knots with four to six foot seas in the region by Saturday. You can see changes for the St. Paul and St. George region, 35 knots from the south and east, 14 foot seas there. 40 knot winds, gales for St. Matthew, and winds coming up across the YK Delta, anywhere from 30 to 35 knots, looking at eight to about 11 foot seas around Nunavak Island. For the north slope, light winds across the Beaufort, anywhere from 5 to 10 knots over the ice, and a kind of a variable flow across the Chukchi coast over the open water, about 2 to 3 foot seas expected on Friday. We start to get into a stronger southerly flow on Saturday, 10 to 30 knots is uh, highest we see as you get into the Bering Strait, and still looking for light and somewhat variable winds over the Beaufort on Saturday. Recapping tonight's weather, watch for showers and thunderstorms across the central and eastern interior. We may see a few strikes around the Talkeetnas as well. Rain showers trying to move back in across southern parts of southeast. As low pressure moves northward, winds may come up a little bit more than forecast at this point, so keep watch on that. Watch for showers and thunderstorms to be widely scattered across the interior and moving into parts of south central as we go into Friday and again on Saturday. And an unusually strong storm working into the bearing at 967 millibars on Saturday will crank up the southerly flow across the west coast. Gales and storm force winds for the Aleutians for tomorrow and into Saturday. And widely scattered showers and thunderstorms will return for the interior, parts of the Brooks Range, and parts of south central for Saturday. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>